Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back again with King Arthur Knight's Tale. I've decided I will play this game when it comes out on April 26th. That being the case, I thought it would be interesting to comb through the information released about the title thus far. Please note, this is a massive game with a lot of moving parts. If I missed an important detail, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will place the information in a pinned post. As usual, there are chapters if you want to skip around. First, let me give a brief recap of the lore which serves as the background of this game. King Arthur is a mythical figure of Welsh and English folklore. According to the legend, he led Britain against Saxon invaders in the late 5th and 6th centuries. During that time, he assembled the Knights of the Round Table, an order focused on protecting the peace in the king's realm. King Arthur is ultimately betrayed and killed by his nephew, Sir Mordred. He slays Sir Mordred right before succumbing to his injuries. His body is taken to the island of Avalon, which is ruled by the Lady of the Lake. She is the same creature who gifted King Arthur with Excalibur, his legendary sword. The Lady hopes healing magic on Avalon will eventually revive King Arthur when Britain needs him again. That is where the legend usually ends. This game answers the question, what would happen if King Arthur's resurrection went horribly wrong? What if he was stuck between being alive and dead, in constant pain, and slowly going insane? The game starts with you taking on the role of Sor Mordred. That's right. Essentially, you play the bad guy. King Arthur is raising an undead army, and the Lady of the Lake is powerless to stop him. In desperation, she resurrects the only person who has proven capable of killing the king. Neocore Games describes King Arthur Knight's Tale as being a role-playing tactical game, a unique hybrid between turn-based tactical games and traditional character-centric RPGs. The game is divided up into missions that you select from the adventurer map. Each mission has a specific objective you must complete. While exploring, you will encounter red tiles on the ground close to a combat encounter. When the fight actually starts, you are allowed to place party members on any green tiles. The more red tiles you discover, the more options you will have to place party members in a strategically advantageous position. In combat, characters move around on a grid system and their action points determine what abilities they can use. You can manually choose what direction your characters are facing, and this is very important. Characters with a shield will take less damage from the front, but can be backstabbed when attacked from the back. Backstabs can be performed by all classes and result in 30% additional damage. All characters are also capable of going into an overwatch stance and attacking an enemy once they are in range. If a party member reaches zero health, they will permanently die. If Sir Mordred loses all health, it is game over. Health and armor do not automatically recharge after every battle. There are shrines and campfires that provide healing, but they have limited uses. You can bring potions to heal yourself, but they must be equipped on your character prior to starting the level. There are chests and objects you can loot, but you cannot start using them until after you return to Camelot. More on Camelot later. Since each mission has a specific objective, you don't have to engage in every fight. If you try to fight everything, it will wear your party down and potentially make the final fight of the level significantly harder. Once you have completed the main objective, you are able to go back through the level and do anything you might have missed. Shortly after the prologue, you will unlock Camelot, which serves as the main hub for the game. There are seven buildings within Camelot you must unlock to access specific functionality. The hospice heals party members' vitality. The cathedral heals party members from injuries such as broken bones or internal bleeding. The merchant allows you to purchase and sell items. The training ground allows heroes to gain XP while they are not on missions. 
The Enchanted Tower sells rare relics of weapons, armor, and trinkets. The Crypt houses all of your heroes that have perished. And finally, the Round Table allows you to choose which heroes actually sit at your Round Table. Some of these buildings have very powerful upgrades that you can purchase. For example, the Hospice can give permanent vitality bonuses to your party, and the Cathedral can let you use potions in combat with no action point cost. All buildings also possess a court title. This title will grant a party member special bonuses such as reduced healing cost or an increase in the selling price of items. When deciding which party member should receive the bonus, it's important to take their traits into account. More on traits later. Before we get into party members, I want to make a quick note that if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you clicking the like button. I use that information to determine what kind of content my channel wants to receive and the quality of the content I put out. Plus, it helps my video to reach more people. I appreciate all of the support. There are 30 plus possible party members, all of whom are taken directly from Arthur's Legend. I couldn't find a full list of those available in the game, but here's a list of who I have seen in various videos and on the official website thus far. Obviously, many of these names will be recognizable to anyone familiar with the Knights of the Round Table. These party members all have their own personalities and even more importantly, their own sense of morality. There is a complicated system of morality in the game that determines who you are able to recruit and which party members will stay loyal to you. Looking at the morality chart, you'll see the horizontal axis represents Christianity or the old faith. Followers of the old faith believe in the religion of ancient tribes and faith folk. They will focus more on preserving ancient relics. Followers of Christianity believe in one God. They focus more on being fearless and kind. On the vertical axis, you will see rightful and tyrant. A rightful character believes that justice and law prevails. They will focus on actions that are heroic and lawful. A tyrant's goal is power and control. They will lean towards cruel and oppressive decisions. Some Camelot upgrades and party members can only be unlocked based on your morality. It is likely that recruiting all party members or unlocking all of Camelot's upgrades in one playthrough is not possible. In addition, based on where you land in the chart, a party member may turn their back on you or flat out turn against you. Keep in mind, none of the morality types mean you are a kind and sweet person. A righteous ruler could decide to viciously behead a group of bandits instead of letting them free. Despite Sir Mordred being considered a tyrant in life, he is neutral at the start of the game. Each party member has specific personality traits that you need to keep in mind when deciding if you are going to take them with you. For example, Lady Dendrain has Covenant as a trait, which means she gains plus one loyalty after every mission with a party that has at least one other Christian hero. Sir Balin has a trait called Unpopular, which means it costs 100% additional gold to heal him at Camelot. There are six classes in the game. Defenders have heavy armor and shields, making them extremely resilient. They get abilities that mitigate damage and increase their HP. As a trade-off, their weapons do significantly less damage. Sir Mordred is a defender. Champions focus on doing melee damage with two-handed weapons and have incredible armor penetration. They can wear heavy armor but aren't nearly as resilient as defenders. They get abilities that increase damage and can cause stun or bleeding on enemies. Sir Kay, King Arthur's foster brother, is a champion. Marksmen use bows that do fantastic range damage, but they can only wear light armor. Their abilities increase their damage and can cause status effects such as burning or poisoned. If an enemy is in melee range, a marksman's damage decreases by 50%. Lady Dendrain, known for being Sir Percival's brother, is a marksman. Vanguards wear medium armor, deal burst damage, and can set traps. They can also stealth across the battlefield. Enemies can also set up traps on the terrain that will trigger if you don't have a high enough perception to notice them. Vanguards and marksmen get a scout skill specifically to help them locate enemy traps. Sir Tristan, legendary for his affair with Lady Assault, is a vanguard.
Arcanists deal ranged damage with a staff weapon while laying down area of effect offensive spells and debuffing curses. They can only wear light armor and have low vitality. Merlin, who requires no introduction, is an Arcanist. Finally, sages also deal ranged damage with staff weapons, but they can wear medium armor and use spells to buff the entire party. They also specialize in frost magic, allowing them to use ice walls and protective barriers. Sir Leo de Grants, father of Guinevere, is a sage. Some party members have unique abilities or a unique list of abilities in an order that's different from other party members with the same class. There is a PvP option in the game. Heroes in this mode will have more powerful skills that aren't available to them in the base game. That is the extent of the information I found regarding King Arthur Knight's Tale. Like I said, this is a massive game and I am sure there are things that I missed. Feel free to leave a comment down below if there is additional information or corrections to anything I have here. As a reminder, this game will be available April 26th for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like down below, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.